Witam bardzo serdecznie w Welcome przedstawicielstwie regionalnym to the regional representation of the European Commission in Wrocław on the conference entitled Development Cooperation for Democracy. And the conference is organized in cooperation with the European Commission regional representation of the EC in Wrocław and the Eastern Europe College in Wrocław. Partners of the conference are ALDA, the European Association for Local Democracy, the network affiliated at the European Council, uh, his members are both Wrocław and the province of, uh, uh, province of Lower Silesia. Let's start with technical matters. The conference is interpreted into English and Polish. Please equip yourselves with the interpreting sets if you need so. Polish is channel number one, English channel number two. Let's make sure that the interpretation uh, works. Uh, can you hear the imp interpreter right now? I guess there are some thumbs up. Good news. Let's check the other way around. Sprawdźmy teraz polski. W takim razie, czy słyszycie państwo po polsku? Głos tłumacza. Raz, dwa, raz, dwa, raz, dwa. Raz, dwa, trzy. Raz, raz, raz. Raz, dwa, trzy. Let me just inform you additionally that the event is streamed on the Facebook channel of uh, our uh, regional representation. And I would like to ask you to register on the list, uh, take your agenda as well, uh, during the break preferably. All right. I think that's it in terms of technical issues. Let's start the conference from the official opening. I would like to ask the host of the venue we are in right now, Mr. Jacek Wasik, director of the regional representation of the EC in Wrocław, to take the floor and introduce us to the topic. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, and it's very nice for me to welcome you here in the House of Europe, uh, both those of you gathered here and those uh, in front of the screens on the conference that is organized along with our partners. Thank you very much for giving us the possibility of cooperating with you. The EU Development Cooperation uh, en encompasses 150 countries all over the world, but it also is connected with uh, civic societies and with other entities engaged in developing de democracy in these countries. The support we grant, uh, both uh, monetary and engagement in dialogue, are aimed at proper um, disseminating good rules, rule of law, development of human beings, but also to foster the social economic cooperation of these countries. However, for the last nine months, our eyes are looking worriedly towards Ukraine, where Ukraine is defending itself against Russia. Uh, war for freedom, freedom not only of the Ukrainian state, but also all of us here in Europe, because what connects European citizens, what is the pillar of European unity and our strength is our common, common values, such as freedom, democracy, equality, rule of law, solidarity. These values make for our common security, stability and well-being. And only due to the tragic and uh, well, unlawful aggression of Russia into Ukraine showed us how important, how valued is this European solidarity for us. Solidarity that has different forms, different aspects but also it entails some material elements. Just yesterday, the European Parliament has uh, agreed on the loan uh, uh, applied uh, by the EC of the 18 billion of euro. 
służyła Systemu prawnego, systems, legal system, po to, żeby so to Ukrainę support Ukraine on its road to European Union membership. I między innymi o tym And I think this would be one of the topics today, discussed today, how to support Ukrainian citizens on their road to our common unified Europe. Thank you very much, and I wish you all fruitful discussions. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much, Director. Now I would like to ask the representative of the second organizer, uh, Foundation College of Eastern Europe, Jan uh, Nowak Jezierański, Laurinas Vajcinas, the chairman of the board. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much uh, to the EC and the representation of uh, the thereof uh, here. Uh, I would like to welcome uh, and I would like to acknowledge Ukrainian lo members of lo local governments. Uh, these are these uh, representatives who are right now on the fur forefront of war. They are the symbol of uh, the uh, standing against Russian aggression, uh, the country that sponsors terrorism. Uh, so Ukrainian local government members are from the beginning of uh, 2014, when the decentralization process started, who have more and more to say they are there along with their co-citizens. These council people fight against Russian aggression. They rebuild the networks. Uh, they rebuild all that that is destroyed by Russia. They, they are imprisoned by Russian aggressors. They are often tortured for doing their job. So let our thoughts and prayers be with them right now, those who fight directly on the forefront of European democracy. Thank you very much. I'm very happy that uh, for coming. I'm very happy that we are met here and discuss how the European Union can help Ukrainian local governments, because I do believe that we will start the reconstruction process soon. We do believe that Ukraine will prevail and our help, all Europe, not only selected countries, not only countries, but also local governments will contribute to the rebuilding of Ukraine. We can meet here, talk about here. I'm very happy that these institutions so deeply rooted in Wrocław and lower Silesia, such as Foundation College of Eastern Europe, can be a co-partner, co-founder of this uh, event. I would like to thank Bartek Ostrowski, who is the founder, uh, creator of this initiative. And I would like to wish you all fruitful discussions and Slava Ukraina. That's how I would like to conclude. We also have uh, Marcin Krzyżanowski with as Deputy Marshal of the Lower Silesian Voivodeship. The Voivodeship is a member of ALDA, European Association for Local Democracy, but not only that, a lot more, I would say, because Lower Silesia has been an, the initiator and main supporter of the initiative to create the local democracy agency in Dnipro, that is the uh, Dnipro Pietrovsk. Uh, commune or county, uh, this project, uh, who is the partner of the Lo Lower Silesian region. And uh, this project it, it originated in 2015, and I think this project also supports uh, uh, the local democracy very strongly. So, Mr. Deputy Marshal, could you take the floor? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome guests from abroad as well. Welcome here in Wrocław, in our beautiful, strongly developing region. It's a pity that you wouldn't have the chance to um, see the region entire in its entirety. Um, but hopefully that will change some more time in the future. So again, welcome. And I'm really happy that it's Wrocław, Lower Silesia, was chosen to be a place to, to host this debate, to host your meeting. 
And I'm really happy that it, I'm sure, will be fruitful. We're meeting here to discuss key issues that we are facing right now. I feel that from the beginning of December, when all these demands uh, uh, from the end of, of December, uh, that, that, that the Russian demands and Putin's demands started, that undermined everything that European Union stands for. Um, European Union, Western, so-called Western bloc, uh, I, we do believe that every state has the right of independence and uh, to decide uh, self-determination to decide what kind of unions and uh, international associations it wants to be part of. This was the beginning of what we also had to deal with in Poland. So uh, a rebirth of imperialistic uh, initiatives in Russia to re-establish their zones of influence. And then the 24th of February happened, a, an important date marking the realization of Russian ambitions. Right now, I feel we're dealing with a clash of two ideas of functioning of states. One model that Russia starts to impose, tries to impose, not only Russia, totalitarian, other totalitarian systems as well. I think we're dealing with the world conflict right now. Uh, take a look at the voting, div division of voting in the United Nations. It's not Russia against the world or Western world. It's a conflict of two political and social cultures right now we're dealing with, which gives the even bigger dimension to the conflict we're facing, which also unfortunately means that this conflict will last. I think, and I do believe that our model that we believe in, so having societies that are ordered along values like self-determination, right to uh, have the bottom-up power as well. I think we will prevail, we will win, because our ideas are stronger than totalitarianism. totalitarianism. But of course, we're facing a very difficult challenge, ladies and gentlemen, and I think the role of local governments, the role of activists that foster the values of democracy, that like the values of democracy, is to talk about this conflict. The conflict, describe it as a clash of two systems of values, so that Europe and the whole Western world does not forget it. It's not a conflict uh, of, of Ukraine and Russia anymore, I would say. This is the conflict of two sets of values. Also, not only Europe, because uh, the countries like uh, Canada, the United States, Australia are also included, uh, involved in this conflict. Uh, people who are like-minded. Uh, and I think these values are universal and they're omnipresent and they will win. Our role is to keep the spirit of our societies because only united we can deal with that problem. And for many years, the Russian propaganda and other totalitarian systems tried to convince us that the West, the Western work is weak uh, and we will not deal with such challenges. We proved them wrong starting from 24th of February and that we will prevail, we will overcome these obstacles. Our role is to support our local citizens, uh, our local communities and of course our allies to the East. We will discuss that broadly during the debates, of course. We will be doing that, and I hope that we will leave today's meeting ever stronger in thinking that these values that we share are also shared by the majority of Europe. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Marshal. And another partner of our event is the city of Wrocław, uh, which also contributed to ALDA and actively is engaged for help to Ukraine. Wrocław is represented by Ms. Eva Golomb Nowakowska, director of uh, international cooperation in Wrocław.
Dzień dobry Państwu. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the City of Wrocław, I would like to welcome Alda and uh, for organizing this event. Uh, the role of local government in supporting Ukraine is uh, very, very important. It's essential. We as a city, we're trying to do our best to react constantly to the situation. We help particularly our city partners, partner cities and towns in Ukraine. Lviv is the first one, and since yesterday, uh, our second partner city is Kiev, uh, which was uh, voted yesterday. Uh, that partnership was voted yesterday. We're trying to react every day uh, to the situation in Ukraine. The biggest problem is that Russian uh, damaged 40% of Ukrainian infrastructure. So now we are trying to buy generators. Yesterday, the first generator was transported to Lviv. And we would like to do the same thing for Kiev. And today I see people I would like to thank. Uh, so um, I see Arte, thank you for the Ukraine Foundation, because we couldn't do much without your support. I would like to thank the uh, President for your support, uh, uh, the uh, Wrocław Dortmund Lviv Foundation for everything you've been doing without non-governmental organizations, without ALDA, uh, UNICEF, uh, which supports us to integrate Ukrainian children in Wrocław, without uh, uh, the uh, Commissioner uh, Bureau for Refugees uh, in Wrocław. So without uh, these uh, funds, uh, it would be impossible. Uh, I'm happy uh, what uh, Director uh, Vasik uh, mentioned, uh, that we will uh, have so much money uh, for Ukraine uh, to rebuild uh, Ukraine. Uh, I know that there is also a big uh, sum of money uh, for uh, local uh, governments uh, to uh, rebuild uh, Ukraine, uh, to uh, restore uh, Ukraine, uh, and we uh, are uh, able to do it in Wrocław. Thank you for that. And the last partner of our meeting is ALDA, European Association for Local Democracy. My organization as well, I will talk a bit about it later, about ALDA. Uh, we had a meeting of the management board yesterday in Wrocław, and today we have a meeting with you. So now the president of ALDA, Oriana Otocak. Thank you, Bartek. <coughs> Sorry, I will not speak in the Polish. I'm the first one, but, but uh, I can speak in Croatian. Probably you, you could also understand me, but uh, okay, I'm joking. So uh, uh, I'm really glad uh, that uh, we are here working together uh, and bringing together civil society uh, organization and local authorities in order to support Ukraine. I think uh, it is really important to be here and to say our words and what we think about that and uh, to share our experiences and our ideas. Uh, I would like, uh, first of all, okay, I will. <coughs> uh, then I would like also to congratulate uh, region Lower Silesia, uh, city of Wroclaw and the uh, European Commission to support this event, also to support uh, uh, our yesterday governing board that we had here in Wroclaw. So it is important to share our messages. Uh, let me say a few words about ALDA. What is ALDA? ALDA is a, a big international association working in about 40 countries. But the uh, situation uh, 30 years ago when we started to work is quite similar, in some ways similar to the situation we are now here. So uh, ALDA has been born as in initiative of Council of Europe during the 90s after the war conflicts or during the war conflicts in the former Yugoslavia. So first LDAs, local democracy agencies, like we have now in Mariupol and um, uh, Dnipro, has been born in former Yugoslavia, in Croatia, in Serbia, Bosnia, Macedonia, Montenegro, and uh, we have also now in the Kosovo. So uh, now we have 15 local democracy agencies in that time working as uh, embassies for local democracy uh, all over the, let's say, uh, neighborhood of Europe, 
in the Eastern Partnership, in the Western Balkans, in the Mediterranean area. So the idea is always to bring together international stakeholders, international association, cities from the Western countries, cities from the uh, neighboring countries, in order to try to find solutions for local problems, for creating local democracy, creating uh, more peaceful situation, creating more uh, resilience and, uh, of course, to do something concrete, if possible, some uh, local, uh, valuable, visible projects. So, uh, in beginning, we started with local democracy, but now we are also trying to deliver some small, visible, valuable projects, also, if possible, infrastructure. So, what can we bring to uh, this process that I hope will start as soon as possible? It means that also conflict in Ukraine uh, with uh, uh, Finnish. So uh, we can bring our experience international uh, environment, uh, experience in funding, experience in making and bringing together international stakeholders, uh, creating uh, local projects. Uh, our experience in Ukraine that we also have, in Mariupol and Dnipro, our experience in the Western Balkans that we had in post-conflict uh, situation. So all this is what ALDA uh, want to say today and also what to bring in the future. Uh, what is also important, we are now talking here about civil society association uh, creating uh, cooperation with local authorities and regional authorities and that's what ALDA is. So ALDA is a national association having more than 250 members uh, among them, civil society association, local and international. Uh, local authorities, regional authorities, and uh, uh, international uh, uh, association, NGOs. So uh, this is what ALDA is, and I think we are in the right place now speaking together, and I hope this experience will also help in the process that we are trying to create here. Thank you very much once again, and so I hope that you will have a fruitful work today. Chwala Oriano, chwala Lepa. OK, okay uh, let's move on to the first panel, whose moderator will be Antonella Walmorbotta, uh, the uh, Secretary General of ALDA, who will introduce panelists and will moderate the panel. Here I am. Yes, thank you, Bartek. Hello, everyone. Uh, I will call to here next to me. I think we have Giulio Veneri online, correct? So he will appear on our screen. Uh, I will invite uh, Marcin together with me here. Yes, thank you. Uh, Svetlana Yarova from Vienica. Here she is. Jana Brodvi is online from the CMR. Carlotta Bezozzi too. Alexandru Koika from Kishinau, our office. Please, Alexandru, come next to me. And we have another person here together with us, uh, uh, Justina Stazak. Justina, here she is. <laughs> Very good. Um, <laughs> Yes, uh, this uh, mm, panel will last until uh, 12 o'clock, so we have roughly one hour and a half. Um, and together with our panelists, we will um, discuss the role of local and regional authorities working together with civil society to support uh, EU-Ukraine partnership and how we can uh, be useful in this very uh, difficult and particular time. Uh, as a word of introduction and complementing to what uh, our Oriano just said, uh, of course I will uh, join his uh, words saying that we are very grateful to the European Commission office here uh, in Wrocław. Uh, for hosting our events uh, and also for uh, Lower Silesia region and for uh, the city of Wrocław uh, being member of ALDA and to support this event. Um, ALDA is indeed working 
in this very powerful uh, cooperation. We are convinced that uh, empowered uh, local authorities, local and regional authorities, uh, strong, democratic, uh, that can deliver to citizens, working together with civil society and citizens, are an immense actor of change and support. We saw in our work for these last 25 years that if local authorities work together with civil society, they'll build sustainable communities, social cohesion, and they bring sustainable development. So we are working on both actors, civil society to empower uh, them and local authorities. We are working in Ukraine since uh, 2012, even before, but we opened uh, also with the initiative of Lower Silesia, uh, the LDNE Pro in 2014, also a very particular time in Ukraine. And then we opened with the city of Gdansk as a partner, the LDA in Mariupol in 2017. We have been working also with civil society groups in Ukraine to support its democratic process for these last 10 years. And uh, recently, before the aggression last year, we have been working also with the United Nations to support good local governance, in particular uh, on the Eastern Front. So, uh, yes, we were uh, last year in all those cities which are uh, now unfortunately famous, like uh, Kramatorsk, Severodonetsk, and all those places in the East. Um, I think that uh, I will stop here uh, saying that uh, I join, of course, uh, the conviction and we are uh, absolutely convinced uh, that the the fight and the support and solidarity and um, uh, yes, our entire support to our Ukrainian partners and friends is uh, essential uh, for, for them and for us. So uh, we are convinced that the fight is, is for all Europe, uh, for, for our European projects. So I think that our event today uh, here at the European Commission uh, place here in Wrocław is the right place to continue this, um, this fight. Um, ALDA has been uh, active since the beginning of the aggression in many ways by uh, informing our members, uh, taking the stand, saying the truth, informing our members all over Europe about what is right and what is wrong, because it has been a war of information as well. We have been supporting refugees with our members, both in Europe and in Ukraine, and we have developed projects with our local democracy agencies. Uh, without further ado, uh, I'll give the floor to Giulio Venneri, uh, I will say that we have a lot of panelists. I suggest the following. Um, we will give the floor to our panelists and s immediately ask if there are some questions in the audience so that we don't wait a long list of panelists and then we gave 10 minutes for discussion with the room. So each panelist will have five, six minutes and then we take the questions from the audience, so a little bit to uh, animate the scenario. I hope it's okay with you. So Mr. Venneri, you have the floor. Very welcome uh, to our events, calling from Brussels, I guess. Correct. Good morning from Brussels. Can you hear me? We can. Very good. So I'll, I'll go straight into, into uh, the main business. Uh, 
Um, I will have to, uh, to drop out uh, rather quickly because we are in the middle of the screening on uh, Chapter 23 in the context of the accession negotiation with Albania. So I'm here connected with you from, the, uh, from our uh, conference center where we are uh, having this important engagement with, uh, uh, with Albania. I can only express hope that uh, in, uh, in not so long time we will have the same engagement with, uh, with Ukraine uh, uh, and also the other countries that have uh, received a clear prospect of, uh, uh, of membership. Uh, said that, uh, I would like to pick on, on the words of the, of the chair um, about the importance of uh, uh, working with, uh, uh, with local partners. Uh, I think one of our mantra uh, in terms of uh, engaging with the large countries is that uh, uh, we need to work uh, uh, to make reform, to induce and trigger reforms that are truly irreversible. Uh, through the enlargement process, uh, um, and I, I, I've heard that we have also guests from, uh, from Croatia, if understood correctly, through the enlargement process we have seen that uh, uh, in the past few years we have uh, refined our methodology of engagement uh, with a view to uh, going beyond the tick-in-the-box methodology. Huh? Just it's, enlargement is not only about uh, uh, pushing countries to adopt the EU acquis and the EU norms, uh, that that, uh, that uh, uh, constitute our uh, uh, main body of rules. Uh, it's about truly inducing reforms that are irreversible uh, and that can can uh, support uh, better democratic lives for all citizens and the rule of law. And in order for this, uh, as I said, irreversibility to be triggered, I think partnership at all levels of governance uh, uh, is crucial. So not only engagement with the central government, but also with all other relevant layers of, of governance. And I would like to, uh, uh, on the basis of this introduction, I would like to uh, just pass a few messages on uh, how we are working in particular on democracy in the context of the enlargement process and then go specifically into issues related to Ukraine and the engagement with the local actors in Ukraine also in the context of the future uh, reconstructions. Uh, when it comes to democracy, just a short parenthesis uh, in this process, that, as, as I said, it's, it's about refining the methodology. We have adopted a revised enlargement methodology um, only uh, three years ago where democratic institutions have uh, gained relevance and, and prominence. The work on democracy is, I could say, a little bit more structured than it was in the past. Uh, of course, the stability of the institution <coughs> granting democracy and the work on democracy in general is something that has been always in the context of the enlargement very visible. And this also uh, was entrenched in the uh, uh, so-called Copenhagen criteria, so this was also at the basis of our engagement in the context of the Big Ben enlargement uh, uh, that was concluded in 2004. But with the new methodology, we have uh, uh, structured even further the engagement on, uh, uh, on democracy, which will be unfolded in uh, uh, three main pillars. Uh, the first pertains to the electoral process. Uh, not only the efforts to guarantee free and fair elections, but also uh, the ability of countries to protect uh, uh, healthy uh, democratic exchanges in the context of the electoral campaign, uh, to depoliticize the electoral uh, machine, uh, and to guarantee uh, sound uh, rules pertaining to the funding of political parties and election campaign. The second pillar is uh, uh, the actual functioning uh, of uh, uh, democratic institution uh, with a strong focus, obviously, on uh, uh, the, the central assembly, but also in, for, for countries that have a federal structure on assemblies at the uh, uh, regional level and their capacity to ensure transparency, high standard of integrity and overall effectiveness, including obviously in the very specific function that assemblies are expected to, to retain uh, in the sense of the oversight on the work of the executive. And the third pillar of our engagement is specifically the role of civil uh, society. So in the context of the functioning of democratic institution with the new enlargement methodology, we are looking also at uh, uh, the national framework for uh, uh, non-governmental organizations to operate and also the 
political context for an enabling environment. So we have a little bit of a, of a new interesting uh, perspective that we have opened uh, in the sense of looking at the enabling environment for civil society uh, organization. And this focus, I think, is very timely. Uh, this focus on uh, democracy, this, as I said, 360-degree partnership with all relevant layer of governance is very timely. Uh, allow me to quote our president in, in the last uh, 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 speech that she made on the, on the State of the Union. I think she was very clear when she said that uh, democracy is uh, under attack, our democracy is under attack. Uh, we need to acknowledge that. The rise of autocracy, and we have seen with Russia war of aggression against Ukraine, the rise of autocracies uh, globally uh, is, uh, is uh, uh, clear, is visible. And uh, as the president says, we must protect democracy, I'm quoting, and its values from the external threats that they face and from the vices that corrode democracies from within. And in this uh, uh, context, obviously, the work with local authorities, the work with, with all partnership, uh, with all partners, including the civil society, gains uh, even more uh, relevance. Now, when it comes to uh, the work that specifically we are uh, we are doing and we expect to be doing uh, uh, with Ukraine in hopefully in a short time frame. Um, Let's start a little bit from, from the reform that have uh, been uh, implemented in the country already for, for a few years. Uh, already before the war, uh, decentralization process and the work, uh, uh, the reform uh, pattern that was set, uh, I think, eight years ago, uh, around eight years ago, uh, was going in the right direction in terms of strengthening uh, uh, local communities uh, and in particular to guarantee that local communities would have uh, a sort of a, a driving role uh, in the uh, broader efforts to uh, introduce social and economic uh, reforms. Uh, of course, now we are at war times. Uh, so in the, in the current circumstances, uh, uh, we have seen that uh, local uh, leadership is still important, uh, but from another perspective, uh, in the sense of uh, guaranteeing uh, defense and resilience. So we are in a moment where uh, where uh, uh, municipalities and, and, and local leadership is uh, are under pressure for for another for another reason, but uh, we ex we hope, of course, that uh, peace uh, will be uh, uh, news uh, soon. Um, and in that context, uh, when the reconstruction will start, uh, uh, a so-called place-based approach uh, shall be uh, followed. Um, there is growing consensus indeed that uh, the local level should be also properly involved in structured ways in the context of the uh, future recovery. Um, uh, also because uh, empowering local actors uh, uh, <coughs> um, to contribute to this process uh, will also mean uh, to have uh, platforms closer to the citizens where the scrutiny uh, can take place and also uh, the work on greater transparency and accountability for the reconstruction can be uh, ensured. Uh, I'm, say, I'm using big words, but to put it simple, engaging the local communities, engaging the local structure, engaging the civil society, uh, it's essential to ensure integrity and ultimately reduce the space for corruption. Uh, this is this is a clear objective uh, that has to be uh, uh, put at the core of the reconstruction uh, process, and also in terms of transparency. Of course, uh, uh, we will have to uh, use uh, uh, local networks uh, to to help increase in transparency, while in parallel also at the broader central level uh, ensure with proper capacity building that. Uh, uh, datas are, uh, are collected so we can have uh, uh, database decision making and we can be very thorough in, uh, in uh, attributing uh, uh, responsibilities, channeling funds uh, and, and, so on and, so, and so on and so forth. On the side of that, of course, uh, uh, the legal framework for uh, uh, public procurement will have to be applied uh, 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 rigorously, but of course in a, in a way that uh, 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 empowers actors to, uh, to uh, uh, secure that the reconstructions unfold smoothly and, and simplified procedures uh, in this sense are, are very important. So I would say that there has to be a balance 
between uh, simplified procedures, uh, but also transparency, accountability, uh, and ultimately uh, competitiveness. On the background of this, of course, uh, there's the digitalization process of state services, which uh, was already ongoing in Ukraine, uh, will have to be uh, to be boosted. Um, I, I hope I triggered some uh, some reflection. I would have much more uh, uh, to say on all these topics, including on. Uh, on our overall efforts uh, to work uh, in partnership with civil societies and all level, layer of governance in the in the push for the entrenchment of the rule of law uh, and as i said of democracy um, i just would like to uh, conclude by by stressing a, a message that was passed uh, to enlargement to current enlargement countries uh, in the in the context of the last uh, enlargement package, as we call it, which is our yearly stock taking uh, uh, documents. And from next year, of course, uh, Ukraine, Moldova and Georgia will also be covered by, by our yearly stock taking process. Uh, in, in this year, uh, um, uh, communication on the on the enlargement package, uh, the Commission has tabled, I think, three very important messages, which which uh, I would sense they apply uh, very well also to our uh, uh, partners uh, uh, in the East. Uh, first, uh, anti-corruption must be mainstreamed. Um, every sector which is potentially vulnerable to, con to corruption requires a structured approach. It is not enough just to leave uh, national uh, um, uh, anti-corruption agencies uh, to, to deal with prevention alone. It is not enough to to hope uh, that uh, uh, prosecution will do its uh, its job. There has to be a national effort on anti-corruption with a strategic approach to each sector that is potentially vulnerable to corruptive uh, practices. Linked to this, a second important message, state capture. We have used again this word this year, state capture. It was a few years since we used this state capture in our report. And last time we talked about alleged potential element of state capture this year, the message was much tougher. We expect partners to take consistent and thorough actions against state capture. State capture has become a reality uh, of our uh, uh, of, of societies in, in the context of our um, uh, uh, partners in the enlargement. And I would say also uh, uh, elements could be visible in the Eastern Partnership countries. And final uh, message, of course, uh, it is important ultimately, and this is uh, what the citizens deserve, and obviously also what the economic operator and business deserve to uh, to, to guarantee uh, her prosperity, uh, an independent judiciary has to deliver. And our message has been that, that uh, we expect much more effort, greater efforts in the context of securing a solid track record, this is the key word, of proactive investigation against corruption and crime, of uh, indictments, and finally, ultimately, what matters is final convictions. So court rulings, people, if there are no sentences on corruption, if there are no uh, rulings dismantling, ensuring the dismantling of uh, organized crime, we will continue to live under the dark threats of uh, corruption, under the dark threats of state captures. We are not alone in this partnership. We see that we have uh, uh, leadership in the partner countries which are willing to deliver, but most importantly, we have uh, a, a civil society that uh, is on our side. And also, as for the purpose of this seminar, very important prospect to strengthen the engagement with the local dimension, municipalities, and all other la important layer of governance. I thank you very much for this opportunity once again. I, stay, I will try to stay as much as uh, possible until they, they, they come to uh, kidnap me again to go back to engage with Albania. Uh, thank you very much and uh, uh, good continuation of uh, the workshop. Thank you, uh, Mr. Veneri, for this uh, very uh, uh, clear uh, contribution. I think it was uh, absolutely uh, uh, fitting into our conversation today, uh, especially for underlining uh, what it means to be, you know, to go along this uh, accession process to the to the EU. Alda has been very much involved in the Balkan area, so we are uh, very familiar. With those, uh, with these approaches, and for also for um, underlining the new methodologies uh, that you 
you are following. Um, I think that I will uh, uh, give the floor straight away to uh, Mr. Uh, Krujanovsky. Okay. <laughs> When we see a sequence of K, Z, and Y, it's very complicated. I apologize for that. So, Marcin, you have the floor. Uh, yes. I mean, the, the, the question uh, to you is that um, uh, we understand not only that you are the deputy marshal and you express your role uh, and uh, strategy for the region, but uh, you visited Ukraine recently, so what is your perception about what we should do uh, for being helpful and effective? You have the floor. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, we were uh, five days at the beginning of November in Ukraine. We were invited by local government from our partner uh, regions and from deputies of the top council. From where should I start? Uh, we are talking about uh, local societies uh, from the point of view of local authorities or from the point of view of civil society. We saw it in Ukraine, in action. Um, several examples I can tell you how it works from uh, the top down. There is a great mobilization in terms of Ukrainians uh, to simply fight for independence, and it's visible in at every day, at each step of the way. First example, uh, next to Krzywy Ruk, we were brought to the local people, about 50 people who voluntarily used one of farms, um, uh, uh, actually uh, responded to the problem um, of military, there was a problem with supply. There was a problem with food, or food of high um, quality, not only cans, and it was very difficult to get uh, such food. So local uh, people sat down, they thought, what can we do? And they opened the production of soups based on vegetables. They dried for vegetables, so they developed the recipe, they prepared 10 different types of soups, and they packed uh, these dried vegetables and 50,000 portions for soldiers a day created. They did it pro bono. They did it uh, because they wanted to do it. Um, so uh, also we can, were invited by local uh, societies and local authorities um, at the level of uh, circuits uh, to uh, local governors as Nimirov. I mean, the same situation like in Poland. And they were very engaged as well. They had the power to do things, to gather people around, to inspire people. And we see all that um, with our, <laughs> we witnessed that basically. We were there. So, uh, what uh, is it there for me from this experience? I think that we should work on many different fields, on many different levels here in Europe, uh, because uh, what was mentioned before, we need to tell the truth. We need to tell the truth about the situation in Ukraine. We need to affect our local societies, local government, and also support Ukraine and their spirit in Poland, because this prolonging conflict also affects our citizens in many areas in terms of economy, psychology, well, it is our responsibility to sustain their motivation for all the reasons uh, we uh, mentioned. And the second uh, thing is the financial support in the country, in Poland, but also um, 
for the citizens in Ukraine. In Ukraine, it is essential we need to show this support uh, because the fact that we went to Ukraine also showed our friends that we are with them even in very difficult conditions, in difficult times, and they really want us, uh, broadly understood uh, Western world, to be engaged there in Ukraine, not in big projects, but in small projects that would prove our solidarity with them. For example, uh, renovating a school or taking part in the renovation of the school. Um, we were in Apostolova place in Ukraine, in which during one morning, three rockets were shot and the best high schools were damaged. The schools that were just being erected, they were just being renovated. During several minutes, they were damaged totally. We can see that this war in Ukraine well, the aim of this war is to damage everything, but what's the point of hitting schools? And they showed us that actually this is taking hope and dreams from the people, taking their future. So we wanted to renovate the hospital first, and we couldn't do it because other thing happened. Schools were damaged, demolished, so we needed to rethink it. So we need to support local communities in Ukraine. We need to work with our local governments. We need to help them spiritually as a local government in Wrocław. We are doing that. We are acting from the beginning using the measures uh, at our disposal as well. A couple of examples, uh, maybe, what we were able to realize. So from the beginning, we were sending uh, to Ukraine as the owner of Lower Silesia Railway. We were sending trains to Ukraine to transport refugees uh, during this big wave of um, escape from Ukraine. Uh, we relocated them in the eastern uh, Poland. Altogether, we transported 1,500 people. Of course, we provide humanitarian aid, uh, drugs, medicines, uh, with partners from Saxony, Germany. We created international hub uh, for helping us Ukrainians. And the support came to the hub, and then we were transporting uh, everything to the east. So we are doing the same thing, uh, actually, as other regions. We are not doing anything special. So um, other regions do the same things, but if we're talking about the local society, uh, civil society, the fact that Poland or Lower Silesia um, managed to deal with the wave of refugees that came to Wrocław. A lot of people came to Wrocław. And Wrocław dealt with it well, thanks to the bottom-up initiative. Um, that's it was because of uh, people that's why we don't have camps for refugees in Wrocław why because we had a great energy of poles that came out of their hearts um, these actions were so spontaneous on Facebook there were uh, you know some posts that there is and there is a need for, I don't know, bread or uh, something else. Uh, and when we were visiting uh, places, uh, we realized that there's too much bread already. There is, you know, we, we are not needed. So in crisis, strong local society, strong local government is important. Decentralization. Mm. The vision of competences, this is very important in time of crisis. And you as uh, an organization, what you're doing, uh, it's a very good direction. The very good direction, um, you're doing what we all want to do because you create strong communities that cope well in extraordinary situations. Thank you very much. <laughs> Indeed. So I think that that's a very good point to be underlined, this uh, uh, reaction of being concrete. 
and to focus on specific projects. Uh, we, we noticed, and, and I think that on behalf of ALDA and our European partners, we are recognizing the overwhelming solidarity which has been expressed by Poland which was just incredible also and visible in all European uh, media and information. And yesterday we had the chance to visit one of these uh, solidarity places which received the refugees. I don't see the director uh, in the room, but she, we visited her yesterday and we realized how Wroclaw uh, was uh, part of this solidarity. Uh, before we pass to the next speaker, anyone would like to ask a question to Mr. Krizanovsky from the floor? We have a microphone in case. If not, we go with great pleasure to our guest coming from uh, Vienitsa, uh, an important city in Ukraine. Uh, Svetlana Yarova, she is the member of the City Council of Vinitsa and deputy head of the Institute for City Development. Uh, it's great that you could come and I'll give you the floor with great pleasure to tell us what we can do and what do you expect uh, in this situation from, from us and from local authorities and civil society in Europe, how to support you. Um, first of all, I want to thank you because you've already done a lot. So I want to thank you for invitation and for being so helpful and for handling all those problems which we faced with. Um, I know that uh, all of you already tired about that war, but believe me, um, we tired even more because while I'm sitting here and a uh, warm, nice place with nice people. Um, my three years old son and my husband sitting there without heating and light. But we still uh, okay because we are not under the bomb. So, uh, yeah, water. Thank you for water. <laughs> So, yeah, you know, it's like a um, uh, warm safety island. All Poland and all Polish people are so supportive and kind that it's like, it's like just uh, all Ukrainian people just want to show this time to thank you for that. Okay, so let's come back to presentation. <laughs> um, I'm just, it's just my third day here and I think that I already understand Polish. <laughs> I've never been um, on this uh, war time in Poland. I've been here before, but I heard lots of about your support, so thank you one more time. And if we'll talk about local democracy and work with uh, society, uh, let me... I present you a small um, example of our uh, city. So, um, mostly, um, uh, maybe first of all, I would like to um, pay attention for like um, ways of communication. Mostly in big countries and companies, we have this triangle. Yeah, one. Uh, top management communicate with top management and uh, when average uh, employees communicate with average employees. But if we will communicate um, like cultural uh, middle management between cultural middle management, um, like middle management in transport, middle management in um, healthcare and so on, so on, so on, this connection will be much harder to uh, break down or um, to break down, right? Because when it's just communication between uh, top management and average employees, it's much easier when it's just two people or four people communicate. But when you have this um, good communication between all levels, this is much better. So how it works in Vinica? And 
my clicker doesn't work. <laughs> can, can we help her? I, I think I'm useless from the perspective. Oh, ah, nice. Yes, yes. So, I'll just give you some small example, like in general information about how we work with uh, and cooperate with society in Vinica. So, since 20 12 in Vinica acts a program for providing financing support to civil society institutions uh, for implement their projects. Uh, then we have a super nice um, budget of civil initiatives um, that people can just bring their initiative and it could be financed. It's like small elections, uh, but not for uh, member, not for political, but for project. And um, the huge, um, like maybe not a huge project, but really helpful, and we advise it for every city in Ukraine and even in the world, to create these small NGO hubs. Uh, we call that NGO hub, but the uh, official name is uh, uh, like city of content. This is organization, this is building, whereas uh, umbrella organization for all NGOs which we have in the city. And um, you can come there, generate some projects, and then provide them to city mayor. So as it was with our concept of integrated development, Mm, it was funny, it, very, very sustainable work um, around that document. So we had two strategic documents in Vinica. This is development strategy for next 10 years until 2030 and the conception of integrated development until 2030. So conception is about visions and development strategy is about strategies and goals. And when we started to work, um, with integration development concept, a city mayor, every Friday, he was on that NGO hub with NGOs, with deputies, uh, with members of city council, and uh, they were worked about um, this to create these five visions. So what they created, first vision is comfortable, cultural and social responsibility responsible city. Second one is a com competitive Ukrainian city on the map of Eastern Europe, because Vinica is already the most comfortable city in Ukraine, seven years in a row. Uh, vision three, an ecological and green city over the southern, um, uh, southern Book River. Uh, this is the name of our river, uh, which we stay out. A city of sustainable mobility. Vision four is city of uh, balance, um, spatial development, and vision five, city of a strong community. Based on that, we uh, created our strategy, and we have five strategy goals. Digitalization on the municipality space. Second uh, goal is integrated development of the community. Uh, third goal is municip uh, municipal investment. Fourth, uh, green economy. Fifth, uh, in, um, inclusive uh, area, inclusive and safe ecological environment. And uh, six, uh, called vibration city. It means that city with nice wipe where you can come and love that for the end of your days. So uh, our previous strategy was successfully um, uh, realized, uh, was successfully um, involved. So now we have uh, what the result. Uh, we have first place in regional doing business rating. We have second Forbes Ukraine best cities for doing businesses. First place in Transparency International Ukraine rating. This is talking about uh, corruption and zero, like our mayor had that rule, like zero corruption. And this is that what is different for in our country, <laughs> in our city, it's a little bit um, works another way. Yeah. So, um, and first in Ukraine, uh, we got European 
European Energy Award certificate and lots of other awards, uh, which is not here in the slide, but we have lots of them. One of the reasons, uh, zero corruption and work with um, civil society. So we have uh, 369,000 uh, people now, but before war with students, if we will count all non-registered people, it was somewhere around half a million. And we have uh, three industrial parks. So thanks to Bartek, our um, um, managers from city council had opportunity last year to visit um, industrial park and technology park in Wroclaw. They were so impressed and we had some nice example where to go. Uh, but what we have now is um, fields to cooperation uh, with, um, with our industrial parks. And what we have there is um, electricity system enterprise. They made uh, electricity uh, for uh, Mercedes, for Mercedes Benz. Uh, green Cool Factory, they creating uh, refrigerators for uh, Coca-Cola, Carlsberg, Pepsi and other brands. Uh, Berlinic, uh, this is actually Polish uh, investment, Berlinic um, enterprise and uh, NAS company, they providing uh, solar panels and alternative um, a way to bring electricity and like a few months ago they opened their office in Wroclaw and it feels pretty nice and comfortable here so thanks for that. Um, what we have in Venice more? We can cooperate with uh, transportation and urban mobility. Uh, we started to create our own trams so if it will be um, available, uh, not available if it will be profitable for uh, cities, but it have to because it's cheaper than to buy where we, we make monitoring and it was easier and cheaper to create by ourselves. So we're creating this type of trams. Uh, this is our uh, new um, trolley bus we created and we didn't create that buses, but <laughs> still uh, we have them like on electric way buses. Uh, we can cooperate with food industry as well. So Venice is the center of an uh, agricultural region, which reached uh, first place in Ukraine among the regions for the production of gross agricultural output per one person. First place in Ukraine among the regions for milk production and the second place in Ukraine among the regions in grass uh, harvesting and cereals, more than six million tons per year. A uh, nice edu educational system, and that's what I, I was talking about, that universities could uh, communicate with universities and then connection will be much stronger. So we have 60 uh, preschools, uh, 38 uh, schools, eight technical schools. Um, we had that special program with uh, enterprises who produce something in Venice that they ask the technical schools to provide them specialists and uh, 70 uh, um, universities. Although um, rich and high level uh, healthcare system, uh, there we can cooperate uh, in cultural level. I would say that uh, the Festival of Contemporary Art Air Goggle Fest is in top five festivals in Europe. Uh, it was a FA award. Um, we got it in 2020 and it was actually provided by my management, that festival, so I'm so proud about that. Uh, for sure, we will be uh, happy to see you and to show you our tourist opportunities for tourism after war. But even now, you can come, not maybe with t tourist reason, but uh, still. <laughs> and uh, we had a huge humanitarian network, uh, which is, um, was created from the early beginning. So we had um, 
already received 1,167 tons of cargo and dispatched 100, uh, 1,145 tons of cargo to uh, more than 12 cities you see on south, west, uh, on south, east and north cities. Uh, you can see on the map, yeah, that Vinica is situated here. Like, here we are, so it's comfortable to go from Moldova, from Romania, and even from Poland through Lviv. Um, that's like humanitarian hub, like transport uh, logistic hub for uh, other cities. So, welcome to Vinica after war and if we will uh, oh thank you if we will talk about problems and needs uh, now we have lack of electricity and heat that's why we need tents and heating points to uh, to create these heating points uh, then uh, we have the problem that rocket attacks on civil infrastructure and we have to arrange uh, shelters for children because uh, I told you that we have lots of um, uh, preschools and schools and kids get, haven't opportunity to study there uh, if they haven't bomb, sh um, bomb shelter. And we have more than 11,000 kids, um, like relocated kids. Uh, the second problem is that we no place where refugees have to stay. Actually, we don't call them refugees. Us, we don't call us <laughs> them refugees. We call like displaced people, because uh, we truly believe that we will, they will come, and we, they will come back home soon. So we need to arrangement of. Uh, dormitories and educational institution under points for the accommodation of displaced people. Um, firstly, it was easier to um, handle that situation. We had lots of dormitories uh, with universities and campuses, but now it becomes uh, harder and harder because we have uh, 44,000 uh, refugees now in the city. And it's like one uh, 181,000 in uh, in the region um, in November. So before it was much more, um, and most lots of people, lots of this um, displaced people, they will not come back to their places because they haven't place where to come back. They have to rebuild their houses. That's why some of uh, them decided to stay in Vinica and stay in that city where, where they are, in Lviv, Rivne, uh, Zhutomor. Um, and they need to, uh, we need to construction of affordable houses for these people uh, because they can't afford uh, um, normal price for uh, apartments or for house, so we have to propose them some program. And municipal transport is important as well because we need to move, we need to, um, we need to work. That's why um, we need to find um, some solution, alternative, not electric, um, maybe voting, voting. Yeah, the buses with voting. Somebody knows? Who? Yeah, right. Thank you. Yeah. So we worked on that. We'll, we are open to cooperation and we'll be happy to help others. <laughs> Thank you, Svetlana. Yes, of course, for this presentation, uh, for the vision that you have and for the spirit, which is, of course, inspirational for all of us. And, uh, um, for yes, indeed, for, for the fact that you keep on going, you know, to have this vision despite the circumstances. Alda is also yes, I'm giving the floor to the to the audience. Is indeed uh, uh, trying to in the process of opening a local democracy agency in Vienna. So we hope to be able to do something together. I take two questions for Svetlana. Yes, sir. Uh, actually, we need a microphone for the gentleman. Somebody could. Uh, op -ops. Thank you, Svetlana, for doing everything. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nurbol. Uh, I 
I'm in Roslov under the program of uh, Lane Kirkland Scholarship Program by Leaders of Change Foundation. Uh, I'm glad to see everyone here. Uh, first of all, I want uh, to comment a little about uh, solidarity uh, from Kazakhstan perspective. I am from Kazakhstan, and we also, uh, Kazakhstan people, also uh, show solidarity for Ukrainian people because uh, in a few weeks later, uh, we had a large meeting uh, registered by governments. It was in last uh, 10 years, it was uh, one of the biggest. Uh, actually, we don't have such kind of uh, uh, meetings. Uh, and also, uh, civil society uh, gathered and sent uh, uh, equipments, first medicine, drugs, and etc. Uh, we are Euro, uh, Poland's help. So we had to send to Poland by uh, air, uh, by airplane and with the help of uh, Polish government we could to transfer all their equipments to Ukrainian uh, citizens who people who need it. Uh, I'm very uh, how say uh, from Kazakhstan we also very uh, s s try to be solidar and we are so together we support uh, all Ukrainians uh, and we are against war. And, uh, so originally it was Kazakh humanitarian aid, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, even though we have a like, big Russian influence in Kazakhstan, we are also concerned about our independence because for us it's hard uh, to uh, be uh, to fully openly support uh, uh, Ukraine uh, and, uh, their, and the world divided into three parts like uh, first Four obvious four uh, support holy show support to Ukraine. The second Can you please is, shorten. It's very important what yeah. you're saying, but we have plenty of other speakers. Yeah, actually, my question was uh, to uh, Mr. Uh, Julia Vineri. Uh, actually, I don't know if he's present he's got, or no. Yeah, I uh, think he had to leave at some point. But yeah. we'll, in, in we will ask him the question. Yeah, uh, I wanted to know that. Uh, we are like we have always information attack from Russian uh, Federation from Russian media, and we are also concerned about our independence. And in terms of this, uh, they say that the Russians, some politicians say that next will be Kazakhstan. And in terms of this, do you do European uh, Committee uh, has a backup plan in terms of Russian invasion to Kazakhstan, or maybe uh, somehow to? Uh, save their solidarity to be more independent, independent and to be close to European countries rather than authoritarian countries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Thank word. you very much. I think it was uh, very important. We will pass the message to Mr. Veneri. Uh, of course, for those uh, who are online, Kazakhstan is this enormous, uh, very important country in Central Asia. Uh, thank you for expressing also this position in, in terms of uh, civil society. Uh, and we will pass the message to Mr. Venery and get back to you. I'll give the floor to Jana. Uh, she's online. Jana Brovdi. Jana, Jana. She should be online. Uh, she, Jana is working for the CMR the Council of European Municipalities and Regions, and coordinating uh, uh, support from European uh, local authorities to Ukraine. Yes. Hello, Jana. You have the floor. Hello, everyone. Yes. Thank you very much. I hope you can hear me well. We do. Um, first of all, um, thank you very much to Alda for the invitation. Um, I have prepared the presentation, but I will not show it in order to save the time. So I encourage the organizers to send later the presentation to the, to the participants, and I will uh, not speak uh, with the slides. Um, so indeed, today I am speaking as an advisor uh, at the Council of European Municipalities and Regions. Um, and the Council of European Municipalities and Regions um, is an umbrella organization that represents 40 associations of local governments from the European Union member states, but also non-EU member states and the countries such as Ukraine and Georgia and Moldova, etc. And in the context of today's discussion, um, in particular, um, I will, will first of all like to send a, a message uh, which echoes already what other speakers have been saying. Um, here I also uh, speak um, in the name of Platforma, which is a, a coalition of towns um, and associations that 
um, is led by CMR, um, but uh, that works on decentralized cooperation and development cooperation. And Platforma very clearly advocates for the need to have a multi-level um, governance approach, um, and also that the civil society is a, a very important actor for um, for local governance. Um, it is uh, it is uh, civil society um, uh, is a partner. Um, civil society, especially in the countries that have not yet reached its full potential in terms of democratization. Uh, civil society then is, uh, is really a strong partner and should be included um, uh, and should be part of the cooperation and can really be a valuable source uh, also for the local governments that uh, sometimes lack also certain capacities, which in cooperation with the civil society then can also help to, uh, to uh, develop the communities and also to reach that democratization, uh, that highest level of dem democratization in the countries. So that's the first message. Now, when it comes to our work, to the work of the CMR on the on the Eastern Partnership, but also on Ukraine. These are the two things that I would like to focus on, and also so for your information, then a synergies and cooperation uh, can be ex uh, explored. So the first uh, thing is that the CMR uh, has had uh, a focus on um, EAP, but mostly on the three countries, the Georgia, and Moldova, and Ukraine, already for for many years. So we have a, on the platform, we have an Eastern Partnership cluster. Um, where the associations of local governments and the towns uh, come together to work jointly um, on a number of, uh, of topics, but also implement a number of concrete activities. So mostly for the purpose of uh, knowledge exchange and also capacity building. So the topics uh, range from uh, environment to uh, digitalization uh, and be helping to build local government uh, capacities in these areas. And um, uh, concrete activities that we do is that we organize uh, um, a forum of local leaders uh, every December um, where we bring together associations and the mayors to discuss what, what is driving the agenda and what are their current needs and challenges. But we also organize a number of trainings, especially in the last years on gender Gender equality has been something that has been important uh, for us and too important to drive in such countries in Georgia, Moldova um, and Ukraine. We've also organized a number of study visits on, number on uh, various topics and also a peer-to-peer -peer exchanges between associations of local governments in Georgia, Moldova, Ukraine, where they can actually talk about their challenges also now in relation to the European integration, but most, most importantly in relation to war and what's also happening geopolitically and how can they together uh, through knowledge exchange help their members and local governments in their countries to go through these challenges. This is also something that is in our focus. When it comes to Ukraine, this is uh, something that is also very high and very high in focus for us. We've already started implementing a project last year, even before the full-scale invasion of Russia against Ukraine. So last year in March, we started a project called Bridges of Trust to match local governments in small and medium-sized cities in Ukraine with their partner, with their peers in the EU. And as part of this project, uh, organized capacity building activities, strengthen their capacities for international municipal cooperation, uh, organize study visits for them um, uh, and internships. Of course, after the war, we had to, to change uh, somewhat our plans. Humanitarian aid has been in focus now and the partners from the EU sent more than 16 tons of humanitarian aid. We have also organized solidarity forums with Poland, France and uh, and uh, so Slovakia in order to encourage other municipalities uh, in these countries to establish new cooperation because we believe that the city-to-city uh, uh, -city partnership, village-to-village -village partnership, region-to-region -region partnerships are going to be crucial for also as an instrument in rebuilding, uh, in rebuilding Ukraine. And now we are also starting a new phase where we'll be helping 30 Ukrainian municipalities to small and medium-sized municipalities find partners in the EU in cooperation with our associations in 10 different countries and also in close uh, partnership with the Association of Ukrainian Cities, which is the biggest association of local governments in Ukraine. Um, so just um, as a summary and to as a final on a final note um, for us uh, what is very clear is that um, there needs to be um, um, all 
kind of all kind of forces we can put together um, now in helping Ukraine uh, to rebuild, uh, in helping also this region, the Eastern Partnership region. Um, this the, the more uh, partners uh, that can be working in this uh, in these countries in this region, the better because the needs and the challenges, as we've already heard from the previous speakers from Vinnytsia, also from the from the Arda colleagues and the uh, and the Commission uh, speakers are very very high and very uh, and uh, none of us uh, even uh, can can fully meet them um, and so therefore there will be there is the mobilization of uh, expertise of our know-how of uh, of on all levels local government level civil societies uh, is something that we all need to work on and also coordinate and uh, and and see where uh, together we can really make uh, a, a, an effective and efficient di di difference, um, and so this is uh, this is just a, a message of, uh, message from from uh, from our side, and um, thank you very uh, much again for this invitation. Um, I uh, I will unfortunately have to leave you uh, in few minutes, so I am still very open to questions, and I would be happy to answer any of your questions. And uh, also, please share my contact uh, and the presentation with the participants or whoever is interested, and I would be very happy happy to then also uh, follow up individually. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Yana. Yes, yes, we can applaud her. Yes. Um, Yana made it very quickly, but and thank you. We will certainly share the slides that you prepared with the participants. Uh, yes, the CMR is a hub of cooperation among cities in Europe and uh, in Eastern Partnership countries. Uh, and through some of the projects, in particular, uh, Bridges of Trust also for, for Ukraine, and, and we are part of this initiative. Um, someone would like to ask something to Jana before she goes? Uh, in case we can also address the question uh, uh, after the meeting, uh, um, uh, contacting via email. I'll give the floor to Carlotta Besozzi. Uh, Carlotta, are you with us online from Brussels, I guess, as well? Uh, Carlotta, yes, very good. Uh, let's see if we can have her on the screen. Carlotta is the coordinator of Civil Society Europe. Alda is also a partner of Civil Society Europe. And they represent a very big hub of civil society organization, uh, currently also active on solidarity actions for Ukraine. Let's see if we can connect to Carlotta. Yes, thank you very much uh, for this invitation and to, to be uh, with you uh, today. And um, uh, definitely, I, I would like to make some uh, some observation also hearing uh, previous interventions. So we are a civil society Europe. Uh, um, we take uh, good note of um, what also uh, the engineer has said uh, at the beginning, the fact that at least as regards uh, democracy and uh, rule of law work, they consider that enabling civic space is a priority um, in the context of uh, rebuild Ukraine. I would just like to make also an observation that we believe that it is important that this element and the participation of uh, civil society, as was said uh, by the previous speaker, uh, is um, something that is uh, part of all uh, the, uh, the dimension of the, uh, the, the reconstruction, the peacemaking, as well as all the work uh, leading um, to uh, hopefully um, uh, enlargement to, to Ukraine of the EU in the, in the future. Um, uh, we think it's 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 uh, it's really important also to look at uh, um, uh, the role and uh, of civil society and also uh, provide uh, adequate support uh, for this at all levels 
in, uh, in the long term. Uh, we have seen also with the previous enlargement process in, in, a, in, a, in a much, uh, I mean, in a, in, a, in, a, in a peaceful context, so this is, is even more, more relevant, how important was to also ensure cooperation uh, between uh, civil society in the country and uh, civil society in other EU member states, and here also with the uh, with the work that is uh, being done on welcoming refugees and so on, it is critical, and also how important it is to grant support for um, uh, capacity building, engaging into into the relevant processes. So we would make a plea for that. We also think that it's it's really important to guarantee both for civil society and local authorities a clear role and uh, and function in the governance of the future uh, rebuilt Ukraine and uh, funding instruments. And in this context, also uh, we need to apply really the principle of uh, of partnership, and we need uh, really to work together for uh, sustainable, inclusive development, uh, green transition, good governance, as was mentioned, respect of the rule of law and, and human rights. Um, it's really critical that uh, um, civil society can give its contribution because of its experience on the ground and because of all the the work that is being done at different levels and in the different countries and also that it can play uh, a role in terms of monitoring accountability and can help to design these uh, uh, these instruments we are uh, we are really pushing also through we had the declaration signed uh, by uh, 160 organizations <laughs> Uh, including, of course, ALDA, but also uh, many organizations in Ukraine uh, for this, uh, to also ensure that we have uh, also in the different um, EU-Ukraine civil society platform and different advisory groups, uh, clear involvement that we have broad consultation and that we really have a structured dialogue in view of uh, the definition of this um, these instruments and uh, we are also organizing uh, an event next week uh, for this but really we are waiting we are still awaiting uh, also we hope that this dialogue meeting will help us but also we are waiting a clear response from the european commission on this how really the involvement would work at all different levels and we'll certainly keep pushing in the next months and uh, also welcome your feedback on that in order that we can have really clear concrete proposals uh, to make uh, um, this uh, work and that uh, we don't have maybe the same problems that uh, we can see also internally in the EU with the recovery package with the limited involvement uh, of, uh, of civil society or civil society being involved too late when uh, when instruments had already been uh, partly developed. So this is a bit uh, our our message today and uh, certainly thanks. Uh, we think this event is really important and also the cooperation uh, between civil society and local authorities is really key. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, you very Carlotta, much, Carlotta. Uh, yeah. for your participation. I'll be with you also next, uh, next Tuesday for another initiative. Um, Carlotta is very experienced in placing the role of civil society in the EU policy making. And uh, yeah, believe me, she knows what she is talking about. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll give the floor to a couple of my team. So to Alexandru Koika. Alexandru is the head of our uh, EAP unit. He is based in Chisinau and is following our initiative in Eastern Partnership countries and in Central Asia. And then I'll give him the, later I'll give the floor to Angelica, our delegate from the LDA Nipro. So together they are our ALDA package for this initiative. Yes, Sandru, you have the floor. Short as 
you can see. I hope you hear me now, yes. Uh, good morning, yes, I'm Alexandru. I'll try to speak a bit loud because there is half of room already drinking coffee, as I see. So hopefully they will hear me as well. And, I mean, it's normal, we're already two hours in the session, so people get tired. Um, before I start, I have to share with you something. I think there is one thing both of us have in common, me and all of you, is that neither you or me know what I'm going to speak about. And it's not, not, I know it sounds like a joke, but it's not really a joke because it started like in May when Bartek told me about his idea having this conference. And he invited me to speak about, uh, I'll try to quote it out of my memory. So you need to present the concrete work we're doing in Easter Partnership. Please show us some concrete projects. Then like a month ago, when we were preparing the conference, Adrian, who is sitting here, said, okay, Alexandro, you need to present the LDAs. You need to show all days what they're doing. What is LDA? I mean, okay. And then yesterday, uh, like around 8, 9 p.m., Antonella wrote me and said, uh, you need to present ALDA. So normally three presentations, which would take us about 15, 20 minutes, need to be done now in five minutes, in one presentation in five minutes. Uh, that's why I'm saying I'm not pretty sure what I managed to speak, but I'll do my best. Uh, there is a very useful person who is supporting us, Rafael. I hope he can put my presentation. You know that usually when you do the conference, the, the logistic guys are the most important. They ensure that everything goes smoothly. If, if there is no logistic support, normally we here, we cannot do too much. So anyway, I'll start speaking about ALDA and then I hope the slides will appear. Uh, as it was told, ALDA is an organization which has already more than 20 years. As you can see, it was, um, it was established by the Council of Europe in 1999. And the aim, the initial aim, as already Evoriano also told you, was to support the local authorities, or to support the local democracy agencies in Balkans. Well, it was in 1999, time passes, so after that uh, uh, initial aim, of course, the, the organization's operation uh, extended. Okay, great. Uh, the, the organization expanded, and now we're in about 40 countries. It's European Union and mainly the, uh, the neighborhood of the European Union. We're speaking about North Africa, about the uh, Mediterranean area uh, and, and Eastern Partnership. And of course, ALDA also coordinates all the local democracy agencies we have in non-EU countries. So you can see here on the timetable as it started. Firstly, it was LDAs. Then ALDA was created to coordinate as a network all these LDAs. And now we are here speaking about the, by the way, in 2019 was very important because we had 20 years. And now we're all here speaking about all the projects we have in uh, coordinating in ALDA. So ALDA is a sort of umbrella organization of the LDAs together with, the, with other members we have, which are shown here in our slides. So we have about 250 members, uh, a lot of projects, a lot of partners. We have five offices. We have Strasbourg because we were funded by the Council of Europe, Brussels, of course, but then for Balkans, we have office in Skopje. All our administration and majority of our colleagues are in, in Vicenza, which is north of uh, Italy. And then for the, all the Eastern Partnership countries, speaking the six countries, our office is in Chisinau. So from Chisinau, we try to coordinate also Ukraine, Caucasus, and, and, and so on. I'll be very quick here. So what is an LDA? Very simply and frankly, as Bartik asked me to say, it's an NGO. It's a locally registered NGO under the legislation of the country. But the, the added value part is, comes with international partnership. So we as ALDA, we also identify some international partners. Uh, speaking very concretely about Wroclaw, for instance, they are our partners for LDA Dnipro, which is an Ukrainian city. So we come together to, with our partners from, it can be a European organization, European municipality, European region. In this case, again, it's, it's Lower Silesia with Dnipro. And we support this establishment. So basically our role is to uh, bring projects is to support the, uh, the activity organization so it can have the basic needs covered and then they can do it on their own. They can develop, they can attract more funding, more projects and contribute to the local development. According to our internal data, for every euro that we uh, give to an LDA, it's more than one euro additionally generated. So it's more than 50% that are generated by that LDA and attracted in different community projects. And later I will refer to some kind of community project. So this is a local democracy agency. Currently we have a lot of them. In Eastern Partnership we have five. Two in Ukraine, one in Armenia, one in Georgia, and one in Moldova. Uh, 
further, and this will be probably the longest part of my presentation, is what we are doing in, in Eastern Partnership countries. Uh, well, we had, uh, firstly, in Eastern Partnership countries, we were active for more than 10 years. So as you can imagine, we had a lot of, uh, a lot of projects. Uh, since 2019, we decided to extend our work also in Central Asia. So our first project was in Kyrgyzstan. We worked in the media development. And again, it was under the office of, uh, of Kishina where we coordinated. So as you see, we're also expanding permanently and implementing the projects. Um, some examples, and here I'm afraid I also need to further the help of Rafael. One of their uh, first projects that I started to coordinate, it was, it was support to local authorities in, uh, in Armenia. Uh, to, to develop their communities by developing sport interest infrastructure. I'm particularly proud because here we partnered with the European Union delegation in Poland, and at that time the European Union delegation ambassador was a Polish ambassador. You can see him in the, in the picture up there uh, with, with the cap, the, the, the Polish ambassador of the European Union. So uh, we work with three regions, and we help them to develop their infrastructure in order to attract more tourism, tourists. Probably everybody is familiar how, how well establishes the tourism in Georgia. And then having Armenia just across the mountains with similar uh, infrastructure, I'd say, with similar uh, nature, with similar uh, landscapes, it's a pity that they cannot attract so much tourism. This was our, um, our project about. Right here you can see the opening of a ski center. Uh, well, you see, everything you see in the picture was, was like nothing at all. Nine months before these pictures were taken. So. We work together with a lot of partnership with the local partners to establish this ski center. It's in a village in the mountains, which has about seven months of snow per year. So it's a lot of room for, 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 tourism, uh, for tourism attraction. We also did in other, in other parts, we did rafting facilities, we did mountain biking and so on, depending on each locality in particular. Uh, the, next, uh, the next slide will be, I think, with a lot of links. A lot of videos. If Rafael can help me play some videos while I'll be speaking, but just without no sound, so you can see only several pictures. Uh, another project that I wanted to bring into attention is uh, a grid project in Moldova. For that project, we got a award from the European Union delegation, being the best uh, good governance, local good governance award. Uh, we worked with uh, all local local authorities in Moldova from all these districts. Uh, we offered about 20 grants to local communities with a general aim to actively engage citizens at the decision-making process at the local level. And another part was to support government of Moldova in running the local administration reform. You know the political process take quite a lot. Uh, and uh, well, we started in 20, 2019, and only now we can see that this reform is moving slower. So when it depends on us, we try to be quick, but then it's also some policy, policy report. This should be a video, so probably it's not downloading properly. Oh yeah, this is a video from our Moldovan project, some communities where we worked. Uh, another project that I want to highlight is coming from, um, is for Ukraine, obviously. We start to work actively in Ukraine in 20, I mean this project in 2016 and 2017. It was engaging the IDPs, internal displaced people, from the first Russian invasion from the eastern Ukraine. So there was a lot of IDPs in Dnipro coming from the Luhansk, from the Donetsk, and in 2016, 2016, 2017, we did a lot of projects in integrating them together with Angelique. I think she might refer to that. Uh, last year, roughly in this period of the time, Antonella already said, we spent a lot of time again in Luhansk and Donetsk, the regions under Kiev control at that point, like famous uh, Izum, uh, Kharkiv, uh, um, Kramatorsk, uh, uh, Sviatogorsk and so on, where we were working with military administrations of this municipality to help them to better administrate their communities in a democracy way. Uh, uh, yeah, I hope the next movie will play automatically. Uh, also another project is, is uh, media, media dialogue in Kyrgyzstan. Uh, we supported the 20 media, uh, media institutions in order to provide impartial information to citizens, to fight with propaganda, and to help to have a democratic elections. I can bring a lot of examples from Belarus, from even Russia, what we did before the war and how it worked. But I think we are quite tight on time, so what I want to draw as a conclusion. Um, the region is very problematic. I don't think it's a secret. You know what's happening in Belarus, you know what's happening in Ukraine, you know the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, Transnistrian conflict. 
In Kyrgyzstan, when we started to work, it should be peaceful elections which transform into revolution. And a new president was directly from jail put, in, uh, put around the country. So, I mean, the region is very problematic. But what is important and what we notice uh, through our democracy work is that in all these countries, if you start being controlled by the authorities, if your local partners are deported out of the country, if your local partners are arrested, it means you're on the right uh, way. It means you are doing something that is, that is disturbing them. It means that you fight for the right values. Our office in Belarus, our partners in Belarus were closed in 2020, and the director had to, to run away from the country to escape being arrested. The partners we, we worked in Russia before the invasion are now either arrested, and they start being arrested since 2021, or also had to run away from the country not to be arrested. Uh, the most recent example is um, Bolot Timirov. He's a sort of, um, he's an investigative journalist. He writes a lot of investigations, media investigations against corruption in the governmental level in Kyrgyzstan. Just, just days ago, he was deported out of the country in Russia, and now he's risking to be mobilized, forcibly mobilized. So you can see when we're working in this country, the democracy work is not easy, and it needs to be even more supported if you want to ensure that uh, the space for democracy is not shrinking. Unfortunately, the authoritarian regime at the European level and all over the world are rising. Democracy is threatened, and we need to be even more proactive in promoting the democratic values. Thank you. Yes, uh, that's true. Uh, every time we work with somebody, either they are put in jail or they are somewhere else uh, fighting for their life. Uh, I will give the floor to Angelica. Angelica Pilipenko is the director of the local democracy agency in Dnipro, familiar, friend of Lower Silesia and uh, Wroclaw in particular. And Angelica came yesterday from uh, Dnipro. She used to be councillor of the municipal council of Dnipro for 15 years, for three mandates. So she knows plenty of stories <laughs> uh, from, uh, from that place. Uh, Angelica, uh, you have the floor and she will be talking in English. Thank you so much for your attention. I'm sorry, my English is very poor, but I have only five minutes uh, because I think you understand me. We was born in 2015. Uh, our parents uh, is Lower Silesia Voivodeship and uh, um, Dnipropetrovsk Region uh, Council. Uh, we have uh, four uh, general uh, goal, goal, uh, goal. goal. Uh, we. Uh, supported local democracy uh, tools. Uh, uh, we support IDPs and soldiers and uh, their families for psychological and social rehabilitation. In Dnipropetrovsk city, now uh, 215 uh, people, uh, IDPs in Dnipro city. And uh, we are supporting youth initiatives and uh, uh, promotion uh, general uh, quality. Uh, only short, uh, before COVID and uh, before uh, total war, we have uh, some project uh, and support IDPs. Um, we provided electro electron electronic democra democracy and we have very good uh, option. Um, and uh, we um, learn civil society, work with uh, local authorities, because uh, civil society before afraid local authorities. Local authorities afraid uh, civil society. After our revolution, civil society uh, 
was very aggressive for civil uh, for local authorities. They come to council and uh, bam, 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 but that, and as a, as a not uh, um, good. Uh, yeah, it was uh, yeah, yes, uh, we uh, learn them work together, and we have a very good option. We prepare with Lower Silesian Valley Watership um, one delegation, but uh, after uh, start uh, total lockdown, we cannot do it. But uh, we think uh, maybe after war, uh, Lower Silesian uh, delegation and Saxonia delegation will become to Dnipro. This is Dnipro. This is our airport. Airport was very small, very small, but three days, 15 bombs uh, to our airport's input, and we have no airport now. Now uh, we help all people who stay in Dnipro, but not all people go out. Uh, some people live in Dnipro, help to IDPs and other, uh, but they are afraid to uh, bomb and other and other. Now uh, our uh, activity to uh, psychological support people who have PTSD. Do you know PTSD? Stress syndrome. For, for children, for old people, for women, for men, for all old people. And um, we have activity with condominiums. Do you know what is condominiums? Big uh, building, uh, people to, who live in this building together. Um, yes, Spilonta Mishkanova, like this Spilonta Mishkanova. Now uh, these uh, condominiums have uh, some problem, not only psychological, but uh, law problem. Some people go out from this building. Uh, he can't together and... Uh, and, and make decision. Uh, we are con consultation uh, them for these uh, questions. This is uh, our partners who support us from start of war. I I want say all uh, all Polish people. Thank you bardzo. Thank you bardzo for all help for us. Thank you bardzo uh, first who call me our partner. Alexandra Mirovska called me for first day of uh, war and asked what we can do for, uh, for you. Uh, this uh, uh, our message. Uh, Women's Day, 8th of March, Alexandra Mirovska sent me. We uh, you, we send you three medical machines with all medicine, with uh, humanitarian uh, help, and other and other. Thank you so much. Thank you. And and our partners from Georgia. Antonella Valmarbida, who uh, all places, all um, mem for all members, for all visitors, said about Ukraine, about war, truth, uh, true, true about Ukraine, because uh, more propaganda, uh, more people not think uh, real situation in Ukraine. Uh, 
Uh, now we help uh, some people who IDPs uh, for psychological rehabilitation. Uh, before psychological rehabilitation, they paint this very aggressive. It's arm, arm, five fingers. This is before, this is after art therapy. And thank you very much. Thank you, Angelica. She made for the first time a public presentation in English and she broke, she broke the, <laughs> the linguistic, uh, the linguistic uh, barrier. Bravo. Uh, we will have time to talk uh, our, with our colleagues, Alexandru and Angelica, later also during the, the break. I'll give the floor to Justina uh, Starzak, our last speaker. It's not extremely late. You also have your five minutes. Uh, Justina is the member of the Council of the Dortmund Wrocław Lviv uh, St. Edwig Foundation, uh, coordinator of the uh, Aid Action for Ukraine. Justina, you have the floor. <laughs> Uh, maybe uh, I can uh, actually uh, sit uh, in next to you because I need to control my slides. So I'm here waiting for the presentation. As we all here are talking about partnership, I represent the fund, Dortmund Wrocław uh, Lviv Foundation. So here we can talk about a partnership between Ukraine and Poland built on the Polish-German Foundation. Uh, partnership, of course, uh, but I hope that my voice in this discussion will be about the partnership being built in Wrocław between local government and uh, non-government organization. Uh, so how the activities of local authorities can be complemented by the spontaneous activities created with great energy uh, by foundation as our. Uh, so also how our foundation, which acts very quickly, reacts quickly to many different situations, how our such organizations can be supported in a very orderly way, and how can we, thanks to this cooperation, continue our cooperation, because we have cooperation with local government, with the city. Um, and I think that it will be uh, my voice, because this cooperation in Wrocław is very important and very fruitful. Since the first presentation, we've been discussing uh, how important it is to change, uh, how important is change in the society, how important it is to build democracy. We, based on our experience and experience of our foundation, we want to say that before we build democracy, we need to, uh, the society needs to feel uh, the, uh, that they are uh, subject, subjects, not the objects. So for over 50 years between uh, Polish and German partnership, well, both our countries have felt that they are subjects, that they are civil subjects, and they can do something about things, that they are empowered. And thanks to this cooperation, they were empowered, they uh, were uh, bold to do things because there were no borders. Uh, in Poland before, they were in, in the past, there were no place for meetings like that. But when this people feel this that they are subjects and I think that this is the case in Ukraine only then we can build a civic society and uh, this is uh, what we wish uh, for Ukraine and this is how we support Ukraine but how do we do it based on our Polish German experience we decided to uh, 20 years ago in 2001 to broaden our activity to the east so we wanted to create the bridge Bridge or, or partnership to the east. And we began cooperation with Ukraine. 
In the first project, uh, well, we invited young people to come for five weeks to internship to, po to Wrocław. Uh, this project was present and is still continued for people from Wrocław. People from Wrocław uh, leave to Dortmund for internship, but we provided uh, full of uh, free uh, free uh, internships internships for uh, civil officials, doctors, teachers, each profession actually, actually constructors even, or opera singers, they could come to Wrocław. If they wanted to gain professional experience, they could, uh, you know, contact us. And we were looking for them for a dedicated place. Um, so if someone was a doctor, this person didn't go to the hospital. But for example, if they were um, interested in a cardiovascular specialty, they got such place in the hospital. So after five weeks, young people were coming back to their towns with great professional experience that could be used. Of course, they have substantive knowledge. They are well educated in Ukraine, but they have no equipment. Uh, here they were taught about different organization of work, for example. Uh, maybe later I will show you what we did. Um, and now I will be very brief. I don't have time uh, what we are doing as part of our activity. Those young people, besides the professional experience they received during five weeks, a great baggage of life experience. Uh, in the, during the break, uh, we will uh, give you a publication. Another publication actually uh, has been translated, but this one is only in Polish, uh, in which young people tell how their lives have changed when they actually came to Wrocław and after after these five weeks, how did it transform? That this totally changed their life. This totally changed their life decisions. And also, it changed the lives of their friends and environment. We invite these young people to meet with the mayor of Wrocław. We invite them to the marshal office. We uh, invite them to the solidarity. And they uh, learn about the solidarity movement in Poland. We have a lot of meetings. Things, we have a lot of discussions, and all this uh, makes them totally different when they come back home. They um, create friendships for years, and thanks to their such friendships, our cooperation can be continued. Just imagine, after a couple of years of their trips, 15 people a year comes to us every year, and uh, they return to Ukraine, as I said, started 2001, and they can't function in the same way, being changed like that. They function as they wanted to, as they dreamt of working. There was a foundation created, let's give hope, in Lviv, and this foundation is our natural partner for a lot of enterprises we have between Poland and Ukraine. These young people, young doctors, for example, created first hospice for children who are terminally ill uh, in Lviv, in Western Ukraine. They go there, they go to these children's homes, and they provide them with basic equipment that sustains their lives. We co-finance their work, support them in other ways as well. We finance the devices, for example, we help them in doing so. There are some interns uh, that we had that created internet online TV in the Western U Ukraine. They had the courage to do so. A lot of them were on Ukrainian Ma Maidan in 2014. A lot of them provided medical help for the Ma Maidan vi victims. They then left to Syria, to Iraq. They are willing to volunteer then after such five weeks. So we are happy to provide, to share them. Uh, shared knowledge with them. For nine years, we also do charity work after the first Crimea aggression to Crimea, Russian aggression to Crimea. We uh, started first uh, some year of charity work. We sent some humanitarian help. Thanks to that, we had experience. So on 24th of February, when the war broke out, on the first day, we made the decision that we will start helping Ukraine actively. Thanks to this everyday help, uh, every year, 
necessary help. Uh, we had the experience, we had the logistics, how to do it, how to provide support in the best way possible. So we were not acting blindly, as it often happens, which is, of course, valuable still. But we had the partners in Ukraine well established that had the uh, logistics base there. And then these partners can distribute these uh, gifts, these, uh, this, this help uh, whenever it was the most possible. We had warehouses created in Wrocław, and then all schools, uh, because that happened under the patronage of uh, Mayor of Wrocław, all schools were places of collecting these materials. People gave, uh, shared their, their, their supported us immeasurably. We had uh, volunteers working uh, for, for repacking all these all this materials. Uh, then from the pa these packages needed to be taken to the pallets. We had we need to have uh, forklifts carrying these pallets to the transport, to the trucks. So we needed all infrastructure being created um, to pack everything, describe what is it, and then send it, of course, to, to Ukraine. Thanks to the work of volunteers, thanks to the municipal uh, uh, the servants, civil servants, like, uh, for example, local police uh, 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 and the local municipal guard helped us uh, in numerous cases. Uh, without them, we wouldn't be able to, to, to do that. To do that. Uh, a lot of entities from all over Europe learned that we have a warehouse dedicated for supporting Ukraine. So we had a lot of transport coming as well from France, uh, Germany, Switzerland, Austria, Great Britain. Uh, we also had a great queue uh, waiting for unloading the goods, repack it, pack it again and send it to Ukraine. In the first month, we sent over 400 tons of material goods, material gifts to Ukraine. As I said, they were delivered whenever the help was needed and whenever, whenever, wherever it was possible, of course, to provide help. For example, there were great queues on the board. It was cold February, so we, we were uh, uh, bought electric warmers or uh, soup uh, warmers so that our Ukrainian partners could prepare warm dishes, warm meals, and send it to these people waiting in the queue on the border. And then it turned out immediately almost that there, are, there is, of course, help needed for Wrocław, for refugees in Wrocław. So, for example, when a mother came with two children, one was, she, she held it into her ar in her arms, and the second was carried, uh, and, and she had no more arms, no more place to take the, to take any any extra luggage. So even the basic products were needed. So then the these people could come to us and they got these uh, groceries, clothes, uh, uh, sleeping mats. Uh, so or before you know we found them some accommodation. So so the help was was just great. It was just uh, wonderful. On an everyday basis, we helped 800 people just in our center in. Oh, again, a lot of volunteers uh, helped us uh, deal with it. There was a food bank that allowed us to provide warm meals for, for, for the people. Even, uh, you know, regular shops, regular grocery stores are not supplied so often in such a great basis. So we needed to learn how to operate effectively. Hopefully, we did our best. Um, so NGOs work like that. Whenever help is needed, we do it on an everyday basis basis and we do it almost overnight. Uh, local governments can plan, can work out strategies, can work out in long term. We were, were helping from the day one. And of course, we would like to thank all our partners, local governments, individuals, all other NGOs for their support. Of course, we also thank on behalf of those we could support. And of course, to everyone who's listening, please look at our brochures. We will Cam them out during the break. And I think I've overextended the time I had allocated. So thank you very much. No, no, of course, you, you spend well your time and we were very happy to hear more about you. So I would like to close here the debate. Uh, we take 10 minutes from our break. I hope that Bartek will give us 10 minutes more uh, and we take from the other uh, panel. Um, I would like to say that uh, it was all extremely interesting, informative and inspirational for, for the future. 
uh, we know now a bit more about how to support Ukrainian uh, local authorities, communities, and civil society, and certainly we will do so until when it will be necessary. Thank you very much, and we have a break now. Thank you.